Lifestyle is simply how you choose to live. What can a simple man do to be successful? Can we learn from our mistakes? Is success about attitude? Is attitude about success and failure we have had in the past? How can we test our limits? Is it hard to set measurable objectives in time? What does it mean to be successful? Success is not doing extraordinary things. Success is doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. So if you just learn to do it well, key things well, learn to speak well, poor people can talk and rich people can talk. Looks like rich people talk better. Uh, Learning to speak is called survival. Learning to speak well is called success. When ignorance is not bliss, it's important to know. It's important to get the information. Now, we do something very important with what we know. We weigh it. That's another good word. We weigh. Weigh everything before you do it, before you buy it, before you try it. Make sure you weigh it. Everything you get ready to do, you got to decide whether it's a major or a minor. And you don't want to give minor things major time. You don't want to give something insignificant, significant amounts of your energy. So it's very important to weigh everything properly. So we get information, we weigh it, then we come to conclusions about values. Poor thinking habits keeps most people poor. Not poor working habits, most people work hard, but they don't think hard. They don't use their mind to really try to perceive where the values are so that they don't waste any time. It's easy to spend big chunks of your life on insignificant things. If you really want to help somebody change their life, you have to start changing their mind, change their philosophy, change how they think. Somebody says, well, just motivation, that'll do. And the answer is no, motivation won't do it. If a guy's an idiot and you motivate him, you got a motivated idiot. The reason why most people wind up average at age 40 instead of rich is simply an error in judgment about what to do with your money. What would you suggest a 15 year old start as a plan to do with their money so that by 40 they're rich instead of average? You gotta have a good plan, right? If you start making errors early with your money, those errors can, uh, can make your life mediocre instead of rich. You wind up with pennies instead of fortune. Life is accumulative. Our errors either accumulate into what we don't get or our wise decisions accumulate into what we do get. Now's the time to fix it. Wherever you hear the good information, that's the time to start fixing. So we're teaching kids now a good wealth philosophy starting at age 50. 15 will make you wealthy by age 40, 45 at the latest if you're a little slow. Start doing wise things with your resources. When, when would you suggest people should do wise things with their resources? Answer, as soon as they get the better information. Now you can't do what you don't know, but the key is to keep learning so that good ideas keep occurring to you. Now you can do more wise things. Attitude is simply how you feel. First, what you know sets the sail of your life. Now how you feel starts taking you there. Attitude. Attitude's a matter of choice. Now, to make wise choice, we need educated attitudes. I'm sure you've had some ups and downs. You've had some wins and losses. So part of our attitude is based on how we feel about the past. Some people are still carrying the burdens of the past. They're affected by some difficulties, some losses, whatever. They're carrying it around like a burden. Instead of using the past as a school, uh, they're using it as a threat to their life. So part of it is solving the attitude about the past, how you feel about it. Now there's two ways to face the future. Here they are. One, anticipation. That's one way to face the future, anticipation. Here's the other way, apprehension. Now most people face the future with apprehension, primarily because they bought somebody else's view. They don't have their own future well designed. So in the absence of having your own future well designed, you have a tendency to be persuaded to buy somebody else's future. If you don't feel good about the future by having goals set, you take what we call uncertain steps. It's difficult to be confident about the day if you don't have your future well designed. So here's one of the keys to do about your future. Set goals, write them down, design the future. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to see? What do you want to have? What do you want to share? Even if it all changes 12 months from now, the key is to start making a list now. The cities you want to visit, the people you'd like to meet, your health goals, your investment goals, all that stuff, start writing it, putting it in a journal somewhere. Set your dreams, set your goals. Because it's important, how the day goes is greatly determined by your confidence about the future. 
You can't succeed by yourself. It's hard to find a rich hermit. You can't succeed by yourself. You need a market. You need a society. We need each other's ideas. We need each other's collective ideas. All you need is some help. All you need is some advice, some experience. If you're headed down the wrong road, hopefully somebody's already been down that road where the bridge is out. And they come back saying, don't go this way anymore. The bridge is out. So we take somebody else's advice and we say, wow, I'm glad you came along. I'm heading down this road. So learning from other people's experiences, picking up all the ideas so that we can feel good about ourselves. Now, self-esteem primarily becomes from, comes from engaging in the disciplines that lead to value. Self-esteem comes from engaging in the disciplines that lead to value. To feel good about yourself, do your best. Gather all you can during the summer. We call that the ant philosophy. Ants don't settle for half. They go for all. All you possibly can. Do the best you can. It's the greatest lift of self-esteem is doing the best you can. Philosophy and attitude determines activity. Activity is what you do. It seems as though God has designed that the major part of the value of our life is, less to, is left to our own mental genius. When you get ready to try to be successful in the marketplace, how many days should you spend? How hard should you work? Well, let me give you an Old Testament phrase to consider. It says, six days activity, one day rest. Now that's called a philosophy on activity, right? What should be the ratio of rest to activity? Old Testament suggests six one. I got a good point for you. Make rest a necessity, not an objective. The objective of, of life is not to rest. The objective of life is to accomplish, to growth, full growth, full accomplishment, test the outer limits of your abilities. That's what life is all about. See what all you can do. That's what life is all about. Mm -hmm. Now we need rest, but you must make rest a necessity, not an objective. If you make it an objective, you start falling into what we call the average syndrome. People who live mediocre lives are always looking forward to getting off. Successful people are always looking forward to getting on. Successful people don't want off. They want on. They want to get on with the job. They rest only enough to gather strength. Whatever you're doing, do it with all your might. We call that philosophy on activity. A man asked me one time, he said, I'm making about $50,000 a year, isn't that enough? What would you tell somebody? A businessman said to me, he said, my kids aren't starving. And he said, I got my bills paid. And he said, we're doing pretty good. And I'm making about $50,000 a year. Isn't that enough? He asked me, what do you suppose I told him? I said, yes, it's enough if it's the best you can do. We don't call an amount enough. We call your best enough. I said, if you're capable of making a half million dollars a year and you make $50,000 a year, we call you loser. And we don't call you loser because of the difference between 50,000 and a half million. We call you loser because you're not doing your best. If you do your best and you make 10,000 a year, that's enough. If you do your best and you make a million dollars a year, that's enough. Enough is not the difference between 10,000 and a million. Enough is simply doing the best you can. So that's the key to the good life. The challenge of life is to make measurable progress in reasonable time. Measurable progress in reasonable time. First, we don't want to be unreasonable with time. If you and I agree to do something, five minutes later, I'm asking you, how are you doing? You say, I haven't left the building yet. You can't ask in five minutes. Five minutes is too soon. That's unreasonable. Now, if I don't ask you for five years, we call that too late. You can't wait five years and you can't go five minutes. Right? You, we all have to learn what is reasonable time to expect somebody to make progress, to grow, to change, to develop. Lifestyle is simply how you choose to live. 